to see you, Senator. Appreciate your time this morning. I want to begin with the isolation changes that were agreed to by National Cabinet yesterday. How big of a difference do you think that they will make to these critical industries? Oh, it's not just a critical injury, as I can tell you now. I've been, uh, I sort of haven't taken uh, much time off over the Christmas period and going around Tasmania, I've got small businesses out there that are already on their knees because they've been in close contact. They've got their doors shut. So, you know, what's a really critical time for us down here is our summer period in Tasmania. These businesses can't open. It's an absolute shocker. And, you know, I've got people coming to me saying, why didn't they send us this stuff out before Christmas time? Uh, you know, uh, I know that Richard Colbeck, I asked him the question myself last year about the uh, the rats and what he said to me was it was up to the TGA, uh, really got nothing to do with the government. So nobody wants to take responsibility here. But I can tell you this is an absolute mess down here. Uh, a lot of division out there within the community because of what is going on. Um, you know, and then no one's talking about is there still the 20 per cent asymptomatic out there that don't show any signs that can be spreading this. So this is what happens. And then they, they can't get these tests either. Mm. Uh, I think the state government or someone's come out, if you're living in a rural and regional area, make the phone call, get online, do this, we'll career it out. I mean, it's becoming extremely very messy. What it does show you is that the government should have been prepared. It was warned by the COVID committee many, many months ago about these rat tests, and it did absolutely nothing. It's nearly like, we know it's coming. We're just going to let it rip. I'm actually believing that's exactly what they're doing. Well, we've just been speaking to some industry bodies who say that they can't implement these changes that were agreed to because they don't have rapid antigen tests. So how difficult yep. do you think it will be for these industries to, to kickstart the year, to, to reopen? Well, how do you do that if you've got to test yourself because you're a close contact and you need 7 to 10 tests to go over 7 to 10 days just to make sure you're clear? They're just not available. Let's be brutally honest here. They are not available. So you're going to have this massive gap was supposed to be peaking in, what, about four to six weeks' time. Uh, this has just gone ballistic, um, and that's the way it is without these anti antiravagin tests. You've got people out there that have no sick leave left, that have just got sniffles and very, um, very little symptoms to this, that are going to continue to go to work because they've got to put bread and milk on the table for their kids and they've got to keep a roof over their heads, and that is the truth of the matter. Yeah, certainly a very difficult situation. Now, Jackie Lambie, I know you've seen the video that's circulating of a Hillsong event at the moment showing all these maskless revellers dancing and singing. Now, Hillsong is saying it's a summer camp, not a music festival, which is currently banned under New South Wales public health rules. Does it look like a music festival to you? Well, it might be a summer camp, but you could have uh, you could have left the music festival out of that bit of a camp. I, I, I'm very surprised that a lot of parents have allowed... Um, their, their kids to go to these um, big gatherings in the first place, um, especially if they have not lined up to be vaccinated yet, that they're at these places. It's really sad when you're sitting here in Tasmania and every day you're watching things for the next two or three months being cancelled because they don't want to take responsibility if they have a massive outbreak, if it is a super spreader. So I just I, I find this bizarre. Look, uh, religious groups were given permission uh, to go to church to wear your mask to, see, to sing your hymns. We did not give you permission to be running concerts out in the paddock or give you permission to be doing it in a church. We did not give you permission to do that. I think this has been absolutely shameful of Hillsong to be doing this in the first place. And quite frankly, they ought to be fined. Yeah, it certainly created a lot of controversy this morning. Just finally, Senator, the Novak Djokovic saga, it's rolling on. We're now one week in. Alex Hawke yet to make his decision. Based on everything that's occurred over the last week, do you think that he should be deported? Um, I think that, you know, I think that what we're seeing is the stories out there that you, even in, in, from Spain, uh, you know, where he had uh, reporters interviewing, he was not honest about um, having COVID then. He was out in the streets uh, playing and, and doing whatever else when he should have in quarantine. I think that's really, really sad that that has occurred um, with him. But quite frankly, um, if you can't be honest and you can't tell the truth, then guess what? Uh, you get to go home and you get to be uh, treated like a naughty boy and you can go home and think about your actions. And that's what should be done here.